As you probably all know, I love everything to do with free BSD or things derived from BSD. And in this case, I bring a review, well, a quick review of a live free BSD distro called Nomad BSD, which runs off a USB stick and is designed to be as portable as can be. It boots straight into a usable desktop, which is based on Openbox, with a tint to taskbar at the bottom and it's actually quite good. I thought I'd do this quick review because I haven't seen this particular operating system reviewed elsewhere on YouTube and I thought it'd be actually make a nice change from the the usual plethora of um, Ubuntu clones. So let's begin. Okay, we're now reviewing NanoBSD which is a live distribution based on FreeBSD 11.1 and it's a 64-bit portable or live OS running off a 16 gigabyte USB stick although it does recommend that a USB stick be a minimum of 4 gigabytes you can use any size you want and the bigger the size the bigger the home partition will be okay don't right let's have a look we get a was essentially an open box desktop with a tint to bar at the bottom and right click brings up the menu that you can get as you see you got office audio video graphics network utility development application settings system desktops, reconfigure, lock screen, log out and update menu. So if you have a look in the office section and you know, as you would expect you get LibreOffice. But this being a portable uh, FreeBSD based distro I was quite impressed that you got LibreOffice in it. It's not the latest version of LibreOffice but that really doesn't matter. Uh, so you got LibreOffice Base Writer, the office uh, front end itself, math, impress, draw, and calc, and you've also got ePDF viewer. So if you fire up LibreOffice Writer, that's actually quite fast. I don't know how quick this is going to be running off. Um, the USB stick. Boop. Yeah, we'll leave that going as it's doing that. I don't know how long this is going to take. The EPDF viewer. I'm pushing my lock loading two things at the same time here. Yeah. Oh, it's actually done it. So EPDF viewer version 0. 1.8 so it's got that LibreOffice is still loading up we'll get there eventually so while that's still loading we'll look at audio and video we've got Cantata XF Burn oh, Office is coming up VLC DBS Mixer and Dead Beef so you've got a nice little selection of uh, audio video players there there's a Office is now popped up <coughs> and it's you know standard LibreOffice. There is a slight lag in typing, but you know it's it's perfectly usable. If you were to write up a document, that's fine. It no, it's okay. So let's close out of that. Oh, let's have a look, see what version it actually is. Uh, there you go. Hmm, that's right. Version five point three point seven point. 2.0 plus and uh, yeah running on 4 CPU threads yeah it's good it's LibreOffice I think everyone's familiar with LibreOffice right back to graphics so uh, audio video sorry got Cantata let's fire that one up and XF burn <coughs> I like 
I'm really punishing it. Right, is a feature it's useful? Yeah, it's a music player, uh, Damon, front end. So, yeah, I don't really use that, but it's, you know, I've heard great things about it. XF Burn hasn't started up yet, but we'll just leave that. VLC. I think everyone's familiar with VLC. And what have we got? And DBS Mixer and Dead Beef. Dead Beef I'm not familiar with. Uh, I'm going to try loading that. Oh, I've got three things to attempt to load up now off a USB stick, so it's pushing it. No burners available? Nah, you see. Didn't detect them. XF burn has come up nicely. And there's Dead Beef. Yeah, I remember Dead Beef. Yes, I've used it a long time ago. It's kind of a minimalistic <coughs> music player, but it's very good. There's a slight delay in some of the more heavier programs in starting up, but then, you know, I expected that anyway. Dead Beef, yeah. I remember Dead Beef. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that more. I quite yeah, it's, it's a really nice little player. So anyway, you got them as your audio video, which is quite good. DBS mixer, DSB mixer. Oh yeah, it's just a usual mixer. Quite a lot of options. And for graphics, you've got XN. There's no scanner attached, so it won't particularly like it for start up. You've got Mirage, which is if you remember is a lightweight image viewer. As far as I remember. <coughs> I like Mirage. It's really good. So we got that. And let's have a look. Uh, GT Cam. I think everyone's familiar with that. Plug in the camera. Fe, which is uh, you actually don't see installed uh, as part of uh, an installation on many distros. And of course, GIMP. I mean, you know, without GIMP, I think many of us be be lost. And the idea that many Linux distros don't actually include GIMP as standard is, is, is bewildering to me. So you got that. You got FileZilla on the network section. Q Transmission BitTorrent client, which is good to see. Firefox, of course. Pale Moon, uh, which is a derivative of that. Wi Fi Networks Manager, which is no good to me here. Pigeon, Silphie, HexChat, and these two, which will um, ask. To default to whichever browser you want it to set to. So if I click on my browser, unless it's already been set, I can't remember. While that's doing, does network? Hmm. So a good selection there. It's good to see. I like the BitTorrent client actually included, which is pretty cool. But a good selection. No Thunderbird, which is interesting, unless that's actually Thunderbird at the bottom there. Hmm. We'll wait until it loads up the web browser that I've just clicked on. If it works, that's fine. Appear to have got two audio things. That one. Right. So the graphics network. Utility. Password Manager, Sakura, oh, Firefox has started up, that's interesting, ah, right, so the web browser defaults to Firefox anyway, which is good, uh, let's have a look at the version of Firefox, I'll use the, oh, I'll use my, uh, okay, Firefox is quite heavy on this, it's tasking the USB stick quite a lot. It's Quantum, it's 58.0.2, so that's not too bad, it's quite recent. I think it's only a couple of versions out, I think, now. And, yeah. I like how, in fact, it, it automatically uh, goes to the FreeBSD handbook, which is a nice touch. So if anyone's using this one for the first time, and they don't know what's going on in the Expect Linux, I like how the fact that you can... Um, quickly read up on it, that's good, I like that. Yeah, look it up. 
So we got that network. Yeah. Oh, let's have a look at the mail reader. I've got a feeling it's going to go to Sylphie. but we'll see. Ah, yeah. So it's asking look. <coughs> Please choose, and yeah, Sylphie. I think. I don't think there's a possibility that you could um, add packages to this particular dish where we've been alive. Um, <coughs> A live distribution or a live operating system, as you would say, a, a traditional server or a desktop installation. I think you could have the option to possibly install it to your home folder and have um, your menu point to that. But it's something I've never, I've not tried. So your graphics, your network. Pale Moon, of course, I've drawn, I need to try that. Utility, right, okay, you've got Sakura, which is a, uh, obviously, a terminal emulator. It's not a bad terminal emulator. Oh, that's quite quick. Yeah. On this particular machine, um, yeah, you run as user nomad. <coughs> I don't know if there's an option to create a new user. I've not looked into that. There, there should be, but you run you, off the bat on when you first use it and you, uh, use it and you configure it. It creates the user nomad. Okay, well that's good. So at this moment in time, it's using 112, 113 megabytes of memory, which is super low for those people who like that. We've 383 put aside and many people would say oh well that's uh, that's nearly 400 500 megabytes no it's 112 at the moment active with 383 put aside for the to start up Firefox again and stuff like that that's not so bad okie doke Uh, Evantum Manager. I've no idea what that is, but we'll have a quick look. New themes. Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. I'm not quite sure. I'm not to do with themes. Let's have a look. Else. Uh, calculator, of course. And. GVim. Good old Vim. I love him, and uh, there's a lot of people. Uh, th somehow, this graphical version of him doesn't, to me, doesn't feel right. Um, I don't know. Doesn't feel right. It's kind of mixing graphical version with a thing. Yeah, look, well, it's Vim uh, 8.0. Oh, that doesn't feel right. You don't. You got leaf pad, which is a lightweight um, text editor, which is pretty cool. And what have we got? Archiver, file manager. Let's see which file manager this is. Uh, looks like PC. Oh no, it's through now. Not too bad. So fairly lightweight applications, as you would expect on a, a live CD. Probably. GIMP and Firefox and LibreOffice are quite heavy. But if you're not in a rush to get them sorted, you know, started up, then it's not a problem. And a terminal emulator, Vim, which, you yeah, see, that's much better. That comes up with a traditional um, console version. And about XFC. Hmm. Okay, do Password manager. Figure out. Hmm, I've not seen that one. I'll have to look into it. Right, so oh, that's all the utilities. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. In development, you got Widget Factory, uh, GTK Demo, and Icon Browser. Ah, let's see. Lexi makes your buttons and 
tailor them as you wish, which is actually it's pretty cool. I'm gonna look into that as well. I'm gonna have a little play around with that. Not sure about the menu system. GT Hmm. Okay, widget factory. Interesting. And you got that. Oh, no, that's just a demo one, an icon browser. Let's have a look. Ah, different ones you can get. Okay, that's cool. So GTK3 based applications. Uh, LibreOffice filters. Create a launcher on the panel. Open box. That lets you tweak it, I think. Access prompt. Where am I? Um, demo agent. Mm -hmm. I'll not bother with those. The settings. This one, AR and R, if that's how you pronounce it, lets you change the um, the resolution of the monitor. I mean, at the moment, I've got it fairly low resolution, and that just makes it for better uh, visual on YouTube videos. But if you want to change it, you've got the VGA resolution, and I could change you know on a more permanent basis and then save it as a in your, your local config it's a nice little uh, lightweight utility actually and this will also start file manager open box configuration panel manager desktop preferences uh, QT5 settings panels and preferred application settings your system is the uh, battery monitor, Tint 2 if you want to configure that. Uh, midnight Commander, I saw Midnight Commander, so a lot. No, oh, didn't like that. Let's try it again. No, didn't like Midnight Commander. So let's try it the old fashioned way then, shall we? Okay. Ooh. -oh. Ah, right, yes. It's a problem that I've come across once or twice in FreeBSD. It doesn't, I, I usually recompile it without the shell from the ports. But in this particular instance, I don't think there's an option to recompile. So, uh, stuck about that. Print the configuration. Oh, there's PC Man File Manager. And it was in there somewhere. Let's have a look at the version. Yeah, very nice. And we've got desktops. You can change where you get four desktops as standard. Um, you can add a new one, of course, and remove it. I reconfigure. Lock screen. Log out. Update menu if you make any changes. And that is basically it. There's probably a few things I've not included. Uh, more than likely there is. Um, but yeah, overall, a very useful and usable um, portable OS. Live USB OS. And, and considering it's made out of FreeBSD. FreeBSD 11.1 it's... Um, yeah, I can appreciate what these guys are doing. They're doing an excellent job at this. An extremely usable uh, little operating system that achieves its purpose in being a live FreeBSD based USB OS. Excellent little thing it is. I'll leave a link to the home page and the download section in the description below. Anyway, thanks for watching.